Okay, so let me share my screen. We have also a short presentation. No. Okay, first of all, I would like to uh, say hello to everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to present my company and what we do. Um, since uh, the whole event is around financial instruments and first-time entrepreneurs, this is probably the best story to share uh, because as Andras mentioned uh, in 2014, I started my company and now I can really share with you guys how we benefited from a successful Kickstarter campaign, although it was not millions that we that we got, uh, but a couple of thousand euros and how we developed this small amount of money through the years and established um, a well-known Slovenian company. So uh, I would like to start at the beginning, how it all started. Um, it was a simple idea. Actually, it was a bet between me and my friend. So um, let's say it was something stupid, as we say in Slovenia. <laughs> Um, and yeah, uh, I betted uh, a colleague of mine that I would lose weight. And this is how I got in contact actually with peanut butter because I changed my diet. I, I was really involved in exercising. And one day uh, my trainer said to me, hey, you should really include peanut butter in your diet. So I went to the store, I bought it. Um, there was not much to see on Slovenian shelves because it was mainly import. And one day it just clicked. Um, I was sitting on a terrace and I said, so I have peanuts and I have peanut butter. I checked the declaration on the back, uh, so the back of the product um, and <laughs> it was actually only nuts with a couple of uh, substances uh, added. And I said to myself, okay, if it's so easy, I will do it for myself. Uh, so I started uh, in my own kitchen, um, grinding, um, roasting the peanuts and let's say delivering the first product. And what you see on the picture is actually a first, let's say minimum viable product that I designed. Uh, it was a Tupperware with a peanut butter paste uh, that the trainer uh, who, I'm talk who I talked to in the gym, um, ordered actually so what he said was bring it to me I have to taste it if it's really so good as you say what I did is I actually didn't add any salt any sugars any preservatives all I used was peanuts and that was something new um, and this is how the story started so he tried the peanut butter he loved it uh, he shared it with colleagues in the fitness center and the word started spreading around and yeah uh, actually by the end of the month I was actually grinding peanut butter in my own kitchen for a lot of people in the gym and this is where I got this product market fit information uh, where I really got the confirmation from the market that there is a need in Slovenia for something like that let's say the market was booming back in 2014. So uh, this was going on for a while, uh, let's say a couple of months. And after that, I couldn't sleep uh, knowing that I could do better. So not only grinding this peanut butter in my kitchen, but I could buy a bigger machine. I could do something more with this hobby of mine, which took a lot of time, of course, because my equipment was lousy and you know how it is in a, your own kitchen, you don't have all the standards. So I was thinking, what could I do to get financing or how could I finance a bigger machine? And back then in 2014, it was a lot of talking about Kickstarter and how this platform helps entrepreneurs raise money. So I kept digging um, for information how to be included because um, in 2014, if you were a Slovene, a Slovene um, let's say member, or if you were from Slovenia, you could not just simply attend Kickstarter. Uh, so log in, start a campaign. You really needed somebody with a company in the US 
that could help you get the access to the platform and then start your campaign and start working on it, raising money and everything. So I found Nico Klanschek, uh, a really successful Slovenian entrepreneur and the um, member and founder of the crowdfunding meetup in Slovenia. He really helped me a lot. So we made um, a contract between me or my mother's company back then and, and him. And we started uh, this project together. So he helped me get on the platform, but the rest was actually just me. Um, so that you will get an idea uh, from uh, where I started and what came out at the end, uh, what you see in the picture is actually the minimum viable product that was served to the Kickstarter community. So for grinding this idea of the Kickstarter and getting access to Nico and applying to the platform, it took me around half a year because I was really unexperienced. I didn't have the knowledge to whom to turn to for knowledge as well. So I actually, what I gathered was get Nico, get on the platform and one girl, she helped me with a lot of PR. Um, and this was probably also the, the point or the person who's um, responsible that we are here where we are today. So um, after a while, after this uh, Tupperwares were sent around and people were buying from me, uh, peanut butter, I decided it's time for a jar because you cannot serve peanut butter in a Tupperware forever. So I, I needed to brand it and I needed to do something. So I decided for a really simple jar with a really minimum uh, minimalistic look, uh, we called it the hipster look back then in 2014. Um, and I did it. So this is the result. This was the result. And in May 2015, actually it was the 25th of May, uh, we started our campaign. So I found a place where I could do the initial um, a presentation, there was an event, a lot of people came um, because of my PR girl who was working for me. She was not an employee, she was, let's say, a friend who was able to help. Um, and based on that, she really attracted a lot of media. Uh, and that was the second crucial part because we generated a lot of um, traction, a lot of uh, people were talking about us, uh, the crazy Slovenian who's in, who invented peanut butter, which is not true. There were attempts in the, uh, back in the history of Slovenia, but it was not the right time. So I kind of had also a little bit of luck. So the D-Day was the 25th of May, uh, the campaign started uh, and, we did run the campaign, uh, let's say the full time. Um, that means the full 40 days of uh, what Kickstarter allows you to, to have. We wanted to raise 5,352 euros for a machine. So that was a machine that was imported from India and uh, let's say changed a little bit with um, a couple of friends of mine because we needed to upgrade it for a larger uh, volume of nuts and we got the money actually we needed three days to come to a point where it was let's say close to a goal and then we needed uh, additional seven days to reach the goal but all together in 10 days we were funded so at the end of the campaign we got 5859 euros all together so it was a bit more what we expected uh, we had 232 backers and they were placed all over the world. That means from the US, from uh, France, we had one from Qatar. Uh, funny story, when we were shipping this um, package, uh, where because uh, crowdfunding works in a way that you actually purchased in advance and uh, that means that he purchased it, we sent it after the campaign was finished and it got broken to Qatar so we had to pay extra uh, for for shipping which we didn't count in at the beginning but yeah we are still here so the 50 euros we spent on shipping was uh, was worth it. Um, 
after the finished campaign, so a lot of media was talking about us. We were on national TV. That means 7 p.m. news, uh, prime time. Of course, people saw that on TV, even uh, store owners, they came to us. And of course, they wanted the product next day on the shelf. But I was not ready because this for me was just, let's say, an, another um a step to to or another challenge to come over uh, or go over uh why because i was not prepared i thought okay i will get the machine i will still serve uh, the couple of people around me uh we will generate enough uh, traction so that we will get the money but i was not thinking uh, for the future so um after we shipped which was end of august for us that meant okay now the stores want us how, how how to go over this issue um luckily my mother had a company back then and i kind of uh, hooked on my brand so rocks uh, onto her company and i was lucky enough that she was willing to do that so she helped me out uh, a lot in let's say on my business path and we started selling to small stores as well. So September 2015, uh, the first store that got peanut butter was actually also kind of, we sold it in a couple of days. So they kept reordering and we were like actually not doing sales at all. So the sales came to us. So the people were asking around. So I was quite lucky also with our first um, attempt at the retail, because you have to know we had our website where we had a short presentation about rocks and redirected to Kickstarter. And then we started kind of selling to small stores. And then the big guys came because, because they saw the success and they saw the story on, um, on, on media, in media. And that meant that they knew that there was a lot of traction. They knew that the brand is kind of new and risky, but they kind of uh, um, approached me and I said, sure, why not? Um, so we were talking about the power of PR and uh, let's say, we skipped one slide. Uh, so first buyers, we started working with Aldi Slovenia, which for us was a huge step. So from a couple of hundreds of jars per round, we actually had to go to 2000 jars at once. Um, we agreed that they will, let's say, do one box or two boxes per store uh, for the beginning. And I was, let's say, up for that, for this challenge, because as an entrepreneur, you have to love challenges, as you all know. And yeah, um, we, we kind of jumped in and we did it. Uh, I still remember the day. Uh, it was Thursday afternoon. We delivered the jars on their warehouse uh, Wednesday morning. And I got a call uh, on Thursday afternoon uh kind of uh hey it's from hofa and i was like okay so what do you need to where did we f fuck up if i say so uh so what did we do wrong and he was like uh we sold the 2000 jars when can we get more and i was really amazed um one indication for that was also the post that we made on social media which i unfortunately didn't find um we had a small fan base, that means a couple of hundreds. Uh, and when I posted that we are going to be in Hofer, Slovenia on the shelf, uh, this post actually went viral. Uh, we got more than 1000 likes back in 2014, uh, 15. And that was really, I was amazed. So the phone actually was hot from all the notifi notifications getting in. After uh, this success, we got, let's say, a long-term long uh, contract. Actually, it, these were in and out contracts with Hofa, but let's say for at least a year in advance. And that for us meant that we had quite some business. So we actually made our first 100K of orders just with one buyer and a couple of small ones. We didn't even do a lot of online sales back then um, because we were still a young company and I 
did not understand how it all works, but uh, yeah, uh, just doing retail, uh, it was 100K per year with one buyer. That was quite a lot. So uh, if we go if we go for, further, so what? How did Kickstarter help us? It helped us in a way that we got brand recognition on the market. Uh, brand recognition with just one product. What you see here on the left side is um, one of our first products, which is the peanut butter. Uh, and short after that, we also added the peanut butter crunchy. So. We left a little bit of space. It's not so complicated. So you just give a little crunch to the peanut butter smooth uh, and you get the crunchy one. But we saved it for later so that we had some surprises on the market so that you keep, keep this um, marketing machine rolling. Uh, and short after that, we also introduced the almond butter as well. But uh, how did the Kickstarter help in, in this way? So first it was marketing. Second was really the cash that we got, um, which was all spent. So we spent all the all 5,859 euros, uh, first of all, for um, our supporters so that they got their um, gifts or their um, presents that they bought in, in front uh, and also for the machine. Um, a little bit of that was also spent on social media and PR or let's say marketing, but not a lot. Um, okay, um, after first uh, big buyers came to us, uh, for us, it was, let's say, happy times. Uh, we developed our online channel. Uh, what you see here is actually our online shop. And for a while it went on um, until the moment where actually we lost our biggest buyer. So that was actually a crucial moment with us because the motivation kind of fell. Uh, we had to start from um, nothing, let's say, we started generating new sales channels, but we were still successful. So after introducing almond butter to the market, we actually got Lidl as our second big buyer. Um, Mercator, which is the Slovenian biggest retailer, um, started working with Spar Slovenia, started including also other partners such as distributors. And um, let's say I was connecting with people and entrepreneurs. And that really helped me after, right after Kickstarter to, to bring the company to the next level. Um, yeah. Um, so not only that we um, were part of Kickstarter, there are also other things that made our company more known on the market. Uh, one of the things was also that back in 2018, we won the title of the uh, Young Entrepreneur of the Year 2018. We got um, 20,000 uh, euros worth of uh, prizes, which included the trip to the Netherlands to check uh, the um, startup ecosystem there uh, and connect also with a couple of very successful Slovenian entrepreneurs. And how it went from there, so what happened from 2018, because what I told you until now was up to 2018, so a lot of struggle and a lot of happy moments at, uh, at the beginning. Um, from there on, it went uh, again a little bit viral and it was kind of a fun roller, uh, roller coaster. Uh, again, the media picked us up, um, not financially, but we were invited to really a lot of uh, talk shows, uh, TV shows, and a lot of also written media like newspapers and online online um, portals uh, did write about us. Uh, I re still remember that I was actually involved with um, journalists uh, for two months. I was only answering questions, so it was quite quite something. Uh, so a colleague of mine who I employed was doing all the work that I used to do and I was just dealing with um, a journalist. Uh, that also meant that uh, our sales increased. Mm, so when the sales increases, you need more raw material. 
And the funny story is that Lidl uh, ordered quite a large sum of um, products from us. And since you do a promise and as an entrepreneur, there are challenges, this was a huge one. Um, our suppliers from Spain uh, told us, hey, the goods will be ready on, let's say, Friday. If we took a truck to deliver, it would take us additional, let's say, five to 10 days from Spain, depending on what kind of truck you, you rent. So I sat in a car and I drove to Spain to pick up one huge pallet of almonds so that we could uh, fill out the order during the weekend and do the delivery on Monday. So yeah, um, it's not just the Kickstarter campaign. It's also the will of the entrepreneur to work and solve problems. Uh, this is how you benefit from everything. So um, not just money, but also your knowledge and uh, how you can spin around and solve problems. Uh, if we go further, uh, what you see here is also um, how we are dealing with finding the right partners for us. And what you see here are uh, almond trees and uh, almonds as a raw material back in Spain. So when I was there, I actually took a moment so that I could also visit and talk to the people with whom I'm dealing with so that we know about the quality. Because at the end of the day, with small businesses, quality is what it sells. Not the low price because you will fail, but quality. So. This is our number one priority. Um, after, after, let's say, establishing the good sales channels, just to check the time, um, establishing good sales channels, it was time to go abroad. And that meant that after a su successful Kickstarter campaign, we did have some clients also from Austria, uh, but it, it was time for us to get there and get the business done. What you see here is what we were part of uh, the Vienna Night Run uh, that uh, really joins together more than 20,000 runners. And we were at the pickup location for the, uh, the numbers that they have uh, where they run and for the chips uh, when they pick them up. And we were presenting our product. And it was quite a line uh, behind our, uh, let's say, counter because they really love the product and they really love the story. Also, maybe one thing, I, was, I, I do speak uh, fluent German, so that meant that I could deal with people and I could explain. But yeah, um, ha giving them the product uh, to taste, to hear the story, also about the Kickstarter campaign, they were amazed how we did it and how we started uh, in our own kitchen. And this is, what brings your company further and um, how customers like the story first and then the product as well. Um, yeah, right now we are not doing everything ourselves. Uh, what you see on the picture is actually our partner's manufacturing facility. So it was also time that we upgrade because grinding by hand was, uh, let's say, not possible anymore. If you get an order for 8,000 jars, uh, that's around eight pallets, your hands hurt. And I can tell you that firsthand from closing the jars. So we upgraded and we found partners that could support us in grinding, uh, labeling and packaging as well. So that we did uh, in the end outsource our partners. So our business model currently is just building a brand and selling. Uh, for the rest, we do have partners that support us. And uh, this is this was, a, let's, let's say, a really uh, emotional decision to make because I love to have control over the company. Um, but it was also a smart decision. So that from a small machine that was founded by Kickstarter, we upgraded to a really automatic lines. Um, yeah, uh, it's important. Uh, and these decisions have to be made uh, or else you would stay small and boutique. But um, in our line of business, this is not what it takes you uh, from um, zero to hero, if I put it so. 
maybe also a funny thing, this was our largest uh, order and that's 200 kilos of, of peanut butter in a barrel uh, that was actually made for an Austrian company. Uh, so going abroad, what you saw in the picture before was also connecting and this was one of the connections and we did the delivery. So if you could say, uh, it was yet another challenge for us uh, how to do it, um, and we have done it uh, with our team. Um, yeah, I would like to talk also about branding, um, because branding is important, and for us, building a brand was doing it with Kickstarter. And what you see here uh, on the picture is actually our... Um, the headquarters uh, place. Uh, so what I wanted to tell you is it's very important how you start, but it's the most important how you develop. So we started small with Kickstarter. I told you that the, um, the design was very minimalistic, but what you see here is actually an upgrade for that, uh, from that. So we added more color, we added more um, more, more fun, more jester um, into our brand. And this was the, uh, the crucial point in our branding, marketing um, decisions, how we positioned our brand. Yesterday, I was lucky to host a, a colleague of mine who, uh, who actually does a lot of branding uh, and uh, it was a funny story when he, she was telling the architect type of a brand. Uh, and I didn't know that until the point where she presented one, one, um, one character, which was Chester. And I instantly remember that this is what we are. So how we start is, I, I didn't plan that at the beginning. I kind of learned that sort of backwards on. Uh, it is also crucial how you position yourself on the market. We were kind of this uh, funny guy on the market. I told you about the crazy guy making peanut butter in Slovenia. And this is actually how we run our brand and how we uh, slalom around um, the competitors that also popped up on the market. So we are not on, uh, the only ones anymore. There are quite a lot of brands trying to sell peanut butter. So you have to be unique. And being part of Kickstarter, that was unique for us. And developing it from there to where we are now um, was actually the second part. Okay, so I told you about the uh, award that we got and I told you also that we are connecting a lot. This is a picture from us guys going to Amsterdam. Uh, I really have to say that with all of them, all of the entrepreneurs on the picture, I really connected well. With some of them, we actually became really good business partners, um, mostly with the guys who are doing finance because we were just in the face of, uh, let's say, facing um, the time where we needed uh, financing most. So getting additional financing to grow the business uh, is crucial. Um, maybe just this one, and then um, we switch to questions. Uh, Kickstarter was not the only campaign that we made online. This was actually the first one, and the second one was um, the campaign help us raise more nuts, uh, we called it that way, or lifting like nuts, um, where we actually organized a crowdfunding campaign that was, to, to say it more easy to understand, we were boosting our say online sales to get in, uh, enough funds so that we could buy a forklift, because by then we were doing all the lifting by hand, uh, or if we were lucky enough, if the truck had a ramp so that we could unload it, uh, we could unload the pallet. Uh, so we decided that we need one. And it was 6,000 euros to get one. Um, we didn't want to harm our cash flow. So that meant, uh, you know, stocking the big retailers. 
So we decided to do a second campaign. What we did is we used all the contacts from the Kickstarter campaign, additional influencers. Uh, on top of that, we added a little bit of online marketing, uh, so digital advertising. And in 12 days, we were actually successful. We got the 12,000 euro, uh, the 6,000 euros in 12 days, and we bought the forklift. So this was a, a really a quick decision for us. Um, I am a guy who's making really fast decisions. This I have to admit. So during our holiday in Croatia, I decided it's time we buy a forklift. I called around some people. I already knew how to make a campaign. Um, we had our website. Um, I decided to do it. We did uh, put a campaign up in less than seven days, and it took us 12 days to reach our goal. So if you have an idea what you want, just go for it and do it. And this is how we do, and we did it twice. And I can tell you that for 2021, there is a third campaign um in the making but let's keep it a secret uh or a surprise until you see it um these are a couple of our new products also that we developed through the years this is actually uh, the freshly roasted almonds in a small box um let's say compared to a cigarette box but smaller um a couple of events abroad. So we started working with entrepreneurs as well. So this is the female factor, the female entrepreneurship community in Vienna. We are always welcome to, to be there. They are always happy to see us as well. Um, we do a lot of um, online marketing, a lot of organic uh, posts. We try to share as much there is from our, let's say, business life. Um, and we try to attend uh, big fairs. So this is the picture um, from Germany, where we were attending the, attending the biggest food fair uh, there is in Europe uh, on a, let's say, startup stand, because getting a stand uh, there is quite expensive, but we were happy enough that they saw us as a potential uh, future startup star uh, with our newest pro product that you see on the refrigerator, uh, which is uh, fruit and nut mixture, that will be uh, a part of our uh, sortiment in 2021. Um, yeah, maybe about our future plans. Uh, we are presenting new products, uh, entering new countries and uh, forming new partnerships. This is very crucial. Um, and to be, let's say, um, exact, in 2021, we will be present in a new country that's in Austria, uh, 137 stores uh, in Merkur, and we will expand our online sales to Germany, Italy, and we will be a little bit more present as well in Croatia. So that was actually a quick overview over the um, Kickstarter and rocks uh, and our future plans and how we build up from a small, let's say, kitchen company to a company that now makes around 300K of revenue per year uh, with just a couple of products that are actually quite cheap. So we have to sell quite some units to achieve that. I thank you for your, um, uh, let's say that you listened to me. Um, and I think now it's time for questions. I was a little bit a little uh, long, but yeah, 